Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Now today I'm going to just try and have a quick look at the sorts of things we should be looking for to get started in a puzzle. I know that Simon's done a blog on looking for anagrams before and that's quite a good idea and we'll certainly include that. Um, but also we'll just try and get a sense of what's going on in each clue so that we can possibly solve it. And I'm looking at the quick cryptic for these purposes. So here we are, one across, make sense in total, three, two. Well, it's a phrase that's worth knowing. It's a two word phrase made up of three and two letters. And um, it's very short. Now the clue there is there's not a lot of room in a short clue for there to be an anagram indicator, some anagram fodder and a definition, for instance, or bits making up for things. So given that a, a short clue has to include a definition and something else, either another definition or some wordplay, there's a very good chance in a very short clue, there's only one line here, I think it's the only one we can see on the screen that's just one line, that it's going to be a double definition. So make sense will be one definition and either total or in total will be the other. In there can just be a link word to say this word, this phrase meaning make sense can also mean is, is, par, is seen in this word meaning total. And um, there are, there is a phrase that's three and then two that means both make sense and total. And if you've seen it by now, then it all add it up for you. So add up goes in there at one across. And um, what I'm not going to do for once is to go for the clues where I've already got letters in the grid because we're going to have a look at the clues and see if we can make sense of what sort of thing they're doing. So here's eight across. Coffee's nice aroma wafting about. Well here, here's where the, where the red flag waves, the anagram sensor comes in and not only have you got this phrase wafting about or wafting, which suggests movement, reorganize, yeah, reorganization maybe, but certainly things moving around. But you've also got a nine letter phrase, nice aroma with some very usefully um, anagrammable letters in it. So. The other end of the clue is a definition, coffee, that seems pretty clear. So we need some sort of type of coffee from the letters of nice aroma. And if we waft them about, we may come up with Americano, which is uh, certainly a sort of coffee, one of the expensive ones you can get in Starbucks, of course. Um, nine across, what, what are we seeing here? Connect to computer using identifying symbol and name, three, two. Well, this time it's a longer clue, so we're not expecting a double definition. That would be a bit unusual. But we are looking for a phrase again. And what we should probably be doing here is trying to identify which end of the clue might be the definition and which end might be made up of something else given that it's a longer clue. And connect to computer, well, that to me looks quite like a definition. So if we can think of a phrase that means to connect to a computer, and then we can somehow use an identifying symbol and a name to make that up, we should be looking very good. Um, it's probably easier to think of the phrase for connecting to computer, because there aren't that many of those. And if you've managed to think of the one I've thought of, then you can probably see how that breaks into an identifying symbol and name, as long as you know that name can be abbreviated to one letter in crosswords. And the answer then is log on, which is made up of logo and N for name. So because we could see name at the end, and that looked like a small part, it's a name can't really define three, two, I wouldn't have thought. Therefore, the beginning must be the, def the definition of connect computer. So let's have another, an another clue. Ten across. Gibbet shines fitted with aluminium. Well, this is tricky. Gibbet is such an unusual word that one doesn't immediately, well, I don't immediately know what that means. Something to do with the structure on which you hang someone. But um, 
I would normally have expected the letters of gibbet to be used because finding a synonym for it would be quite difficult. But this is a seven-letter answer. Gibbet's six letters long, and there's no other one letter to combine it with. So the anagram theory goes immediately. And then we look at the end of the clue, and it says, fitted with aluminium. And that probably means, well, almost certainly means, use the chemical symbol AL and fit it in to something else. Now, the only thing that there is left to fit it into is a word for shines. So we do need, the definition is gibbet. We need some sort of structure for hanging somebody. And we need that to contain an AL around which is a word for shines. Now, there aren't, happily, I suppose, that many words for structures for hanging people. Um, one would need to know a hangman and a noose in this connection. Um, but also the, the word gallows. And that, as you can see, is made up of aluminium fitted into glows, which can mean shines. So that's how that clue's working. And then we'll have one more look at... No, we'll have two more looks at across clues, and then we'll try and benefit from the acrosses we've done by working on the downs quickly. So 11 across, malicious programs such as Bond might use. Well, clearly the surface is sort of something to do with James Bond, the spy. But in fact, um, malicious programs, that looks very much like the definition. And such as Bond might use. Now that, I think, is giving us possibly a pun. And Bond, you might have to reinterpret as a binding or some other sort of thing. Now, I have to admit, I don't know the answer here. Well done if you've got it ahead of me, that's fine. Um, and I don't know exactly what such as Bond might use is doing in the definition, but it probably is some sort of reference to spying. Ah, I think it was maybe my computer knowledge was at fault. When I saw malicious programs, I thought immediately of Trojans, but that doesn't really work with such as Bond might use. Then I thought of malware, and I think I'm getting a bit closer there. But eventually, I think there's a word spyware, and that must be the sort of thing James Bond might use. Um, we'll find out. I mean, as I do the downs, it might turn out that that's wrong. It might not even be a word. So uh, apologies for my IT knowledge, but I think that's probably going to be right. And 12 across. We'll just have a look at this one before we turn to the downs and try and use what we've done. A requirement to mask one's strong scent. Well, here, the definition could be either end. It could be a requirement or it could be strong scent or just scent. So that's not that helpful. So we're going to need to use the bits in the middle to see what form of wordplay they might be giving us. To mask ones. Well, to mask, that's quite a clear indicator of some wordplay. And the wordplay it's indicating is containing. So it's looking, and ones, we can abbreviate that to either I for uh, the Roman one, or maybe even IS for ones. That's actually a bit more likely. So we need a requirement to put around I or IS to give us a strong scent. That seems very likely to be how this clue works. And the quickest and simplest synonym for a requirement is a need. So we need to work on a way in our heads that we can put IS into a need to get a strong scent. And as any bloodhound will tell you, aniseed is a strong scent. So that's how the acrosses all work. Let's, you know, now with the downs, we should be a bit quicker because we've got all the letters in the grid for most of them to help us. And that, as well as our ability to parse these clues and work out what the bits of the clue are doing, should help. So one down, A something L something S. A sailor looking up guide to the world. Well, here again, we've got a kind of looking up is an indicator of something happening to a word or part of a word. And so the end, one end of the clue will be the definition, as always a sailor or guide to the world. 
And we should be able to think of a guide to the world that fits this quite neatly. A is just the A at the start of the answer. And then we have a sail we have sailor looking up. And the sailor looking up in this case is salt. A salt can be a sailor, an old salt sailing the briny. So that's how that one worked. Two down. D something, G something, Y. Well, not many words are going to fit that anyway. In which spare food is taken back to the lab? And hopefully, as soon as you see spare food and that letter combination, you're thinking immediately about the right answer. And what's going on in this clue is it's kind of a cryptic definition. It's the whole clue is just defining the answer, but in a way you're not expecting. So if you've thought of the phrase doggy bag, which fits the answer to two down and connects with spare food, then you might wonder what that's got to do with a scientist and why it gets taken back to the lab. But the lab in this case has to be reinterpreted as a Labrador. And of course, a doggy bag is theoretically for taking food to your pet. And that pet could be a Labrador. And that's why there's a question mark at the end of the clue because it wouldn't just be necessarily be for a lab, it could be for a pug or a poodle or any sort of dog. But it's a neat little cryptic definition to suggest a doggy bag. Three down. Nature God initially defending a creature that's endangered. Well, we have almost all the letters. We know a creature that's endangered, the creature possibly most famously endangered in the world. And then we just have to kind of work out how panda is created from nature god initially defending A. And pan is a nature god. If we take initially defending as a phrase, it's indicating it to us to use the initial letter of defending. Because defending, considered initially only, gives us D. And then A is written in the clue and in the answer. Now, I just jump across to five. Something I, something L, something I, something. Criminals, nice house and home. Well, there's quite a few ways of doing this. Criminal can sometimes be an anagram indicator. A word kind of behaving criminally is all messed up. But in this case, with the apostrophe S, that, that's kind of made impossible. So criminal looks like the definition now. So we need to make up a criminal using those letters in the grid, out of a nice house and home. And in crosswords, home can often be an adverb, translates to in. So you put that with a villa, which is definitely a nice house, and you get a villain who's a criminal. Very neat. Cereal producing plant, palm, six down, small in the past. Well, cereal producing palm is a very specific bit of detail, so that's probably going to be the definition. And then we need to make up some sort of palm tree from small and in the past. Now, small in the Times crossword, not in all crosswords, but in the Times crossword can be S, as in the clothing size that you'd find in your clothes if you were that size, unlike me. And you'd get, so we get an S. And then a three-letter word for in the past is ago, and that gives a sago. It might take a bit of general knowledge these days to know that a sago is a food-producing plant. But there we go. And then seven down, beef beats fish. Well, here you do need another bit of general knowledge. Um, there's a certain type of fish called an id or an eyed, and that's a very useful crossword fish to know. Any any types of anything that are two or three letters long, two or three letters long, are very useful. And here we can think of a cut of beef that fits this answer if we if we know our butchery. And beets can be tops. If you top somebody, you beat them. And the fish can be an eye, and you get top side, which is a cut of beef. And then we'll just have a look at four down to uh, complete the benefits of having done all those acrosses one after the other with nothing in the grid. Officer's fabric more important to clothe worker. And the letters might be suggestive, but we're certainly probably looking for an officer. And the fabric 
is also suggested by the first five letters of the answer. Um, more important, we need a synonym for that. And then to clothe, again, we're seeing an instruction in, within the clue, and that means to contain something again, because if you clothe something, you put it inside. So the fabric here is surge. The more important bit translates to major, and the worker in this case is an ant. That can be a worker ant. So we, if we put ant into surge and major, we get sergeant major, clearly an officer although I believe a non-commissioned one. And that's how we make some progress in parsing the quick cryptic clues. You're very welcome to pause the video with the rest of the clues showing here and have a think about how you would analyze those. Um, and hopefully using the techniques we've used, try and identify the definition at one end, see if you can spot any operators on the word play that kind of suggest hiding something or re rearranging something or putting something outside something else, then that will very much help you. Um, but do use the letters in the grid as well. So thanks very much for watching. Hope this has been of some help to those starting out on their cryptic journey. And uh, I look forward to seeing you another time. Thank you.